The 2012 Petit Le Mans powered by Mazda was full of action and surprises. So we now take a look at the top five moments from the 15th annual Petit Le Mans. Coming in at number five, the unclassified Nissan Delta Wing, which competes with half the weight, half the horsepower, and half the aerodynamic drag, but all of the performance of a typical prototype, finished sixth overall after starting the race from the back of the grid. The unique prototype driven by Gunnar Jeanette and Lucas Ordinez completed 388 laps. It went from 42nd to 10th overall in the race's first 37 minutes, and it ran as highly as 3rd overall in its first North American race and first race since debuting in June at the 24 Hours of Le Mans. I mean, that is the dream ticket. We ran 10 hours, 1,000 thousand miles, and um, you know we didn't miss a beat. At number 4, Core Autosport capped off the banner season with its 8th LMP Challenge victory of the season. The trio of Alex Popoff, Ryan Dial, and Mark Wilkins drove its number 06 car to the win by two laps over RSR Racing. Popoff won for the fifth time and claimed the title in his rookie season. The winning core entry took its first lead at the two hour 37 minute mark with Dial at the wheel. The number 06 led for almost five straight hours before John Bennett in the number 05 core car moved into first when the 06 pitted. Popoff handed over to Dial who moved back to the front for good 20 minutes later. Coming in at number three, Level 5 Motorsports Scott Tucker and Christophe Bouchou repeated as P2 driver champions with a class victory alongside Luis Diaz in their Level 5 number 95 entry. The trio took the lead for good when Conquest Endurance Racing's Martin Plowman went off track and then was penalized for speeding in pit lane with 20 minutes left. Just as it had been all season, Saturday's P2 race was another duel between Level 5's two prototypes and the Conquest Morgan Nissan. Like Muscle Milk, Level 5 needed to finish 70% of the class winner's race distance. Tucker, Bushu, and Diaz made that a moot point with an 8.196 second victory. For a while though, the advantage lay with the number 055 of Tucker, Dario Franchitti, and Marino Franchitti. Two costly penalties did the car in during the race's second half, and it finished second in P2. At number two, Muscle Milk Picket Racing captured the big prize with the P1 Drivers and Team Championships. But Rebellion's Neil Yanni, Andrea Bellici, and Nicola Prost won the 1,000 mile race for the first time with a three lap victory. Muscle Milk's Lucas Luhr and Klaus Graf finished third in class despite an accident and a long delay, but completed enough laps to sew up both titles. The early accident and hour long repair knocked the number six Muscle Milk picket racing entry out of the hunt for the race victory in the opening hour. Luhr made contact with Peter Lesafra's Green Hornet racing number 34 Porsche on the uphill run to turn two. We were attempted to pass underneath the Porsche, which turned down onto the prototype. The incident damaged the suspension on the HPD prototype and forced the car back to the paddock for 65 minutes worth of repairs. Muscle Milk lost 41 laps to the Rebellion car during the stop and then had to pit again for additional adjustments. But the car never appeared in danger of falling below the threshold of 70% of the race distance required to score points. Lure was leading at the time of the crash, having passed Yanni 20 minutes earlier. The beautiful Rebellion Lola never fell out of the lead again won its first overall race of the season. And at number one, Extreme Speed Motorsports won the GT category from pole position, but its journey to the top step of the podium was not an easy one. Scott Sharp came under fire early in the race from the number four Corvette driven by Oliver Gavin, but teammate Johannes von Overbeck was able to put the 0-1 Ferrari back out front. When the number four Corvette retreated to the paddock to address the suspension issue at the six hour mark, and the number 55 served a pit lane penalty with 30 minutes remaining, Tony Vlander finally had some breathing room for the closing laps. This provided only partial relief, however, as the team took a gamble on fuel strategy and stayed on course while Antonio Garcia pitted the number three Corvette. Extreme Speed's gamble paid off, and Vlander crossed the finish line with a 30 second margin of victory over Garcia's Corvette. The win came on the same weekend the Extreme Speed Motorsports team was sporting a flashy new chrome livery featuring Ultimate Vodka.